This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Learn for free by being one of the first 1,000 to sign up using the link in the description below. More about my personal experience with Skillshare in a few moments. All right, so if you're like me who's getting into the IT industry or you're somebody who's already in the IT industry, you've probably encountered the age-old question and debate, how do you get experience without actually having experience when a job requires experience? for IT security. If you look up any entry level IT or more specifically cybersecurity job on a job listings search engine or website, you will most likely find a little bullet point or requirement which says that you need one to five years experience even for these entry level cybersecurity jobs. As a university cybersecurity student who is entering or is in their last year of university, I want to address some ways that I'm trying to wage the gap between the transition of the academic world into industry through the experience gap. So let's go ahead and get started with method or strategy number one. All right, so I know it sounds tacky, it's kind of corny, but there really is a way that I think you can create your own experience in a small scale way. Now, of course, these have the limitations because you're creating your own experience and you can implement it in all types of different ways with your free time. But I do think that what you're ultimately trying to show is that from a prospective employer, you can apply your learning from a certification, from a degree into industry. So three ways that I'm actively working on doing this is first just building my own cybersecurity home lab through virtualization. There's different ways that you can implement it, different ways that you can create it, but ultimately what you're trying to do, in my opinion, is simulate and configure IT infrastructure to some extent, whether that's a red team pen testing lab or uh, some sort of blue team uh, monitoring SOC environment. Uh, there's different ways that you can go about creating a cybersecurity home lab. You can create all of them if you want. And there's, I mean, there's, no, there's really no limitation. But ultimately what you're trying to do, what I tr I've tried to do, is just really basically apply my learning from, from a high level overview to applicable hands-on uh, tools and also some hard skills that you can develop. Number two is just going onto uh, uh, websites and working on hands-on projects. I have a complete list of hands-on projects linked in the card here. There's all types of websites out there that you can really look at. You can look at like CTF-based ones such as uh, Hack the Box or Try Hack Me or Volen Hub. If you're into the red team side of things, this is something that I've looked at. Uh, I'm not in particularly interested in fully red team, but it's still good to you know take a look at those types of resources. But there's also different types of blue team type uh, websites. Really, ultimately, what you can try doing is, uh, you know, creating hands-on opportunities for yourself with a little bit of mentorship or hands-on walkthrough. And number three for me is contributing to open source. I don't do really any of this at all, but it's something I do want to do in the future. Uh, you can do it in different ways. I work on a different tool, create a different module. I mean, there's all types of endless opportunities. Once again, what you're trying to do is just show a prospective employer that, hey, you know, it's not only that I'm just getting a degree, but I also am really actively taking time out of my schedule to go out and apply my industry experience. All right, so for community involvement, there's all different types of ways that you can do this, both offline and online. And I'm gonna give you some examples of what you can try doing and something that I can improve on myself too. Uh, the first one is offline or in real life. This can be through local meetups, conferences, whether it's in your area. And because of the pandemic, it could be through online now, but eventually, hopefully, we go back into uh, a meeting setting where you're meeting with people. It can also be through local high school or university or even city clubs. Um, this is something that I haven't done a great job of myself in university, uh, is, is just getting involved with the uh, computer science or my specific major cybersecurity club. It's called the CCDC at my school. These types of different local meetups and clubs, depending on the goal or basis, is a great way to not only work on your hard skills, 
but also work with a different different types of people with different skill sets. It's a great way to try to enhance your soft skills as well as your hard skills. There's also tons of online communities. You can look at a plethora of discords. I have mine here, Cyber Academy Discord, which focuses on the students um, and professionals are in there, uh, just trying to help each other actively engage in conversation when it comes to getting started in cybersecurity. There's all types of discords, whether it's a different cybersecurity YouTuber, I'm sure they have a discord, or some uh, online Twitter profile, or there's some sort of Slack um, community. There's all types of communities out there. Uh, you're not really limited. If I were you, I would join one active community and you know introduce yourself, say hello. If it's mine or if it's someone else's, just say hello and, and really actively engage in conversation with cybersecurity. And then method three is not so much necessarily working on the hard skill experience, but it's also working on the soft skill or communication skills. And this is building a network. This can feed into strategy number two, um, you know, working with local meetups and conferences. But basically all you're trying to do, you know, is introduce yourself to different people, uh, actively engage in conversation with people, uh, whether that's online or through uh, some meetup conference. It's a great way to just introduce yourself, to get exposure to people with different backgrounds, both cultural and technical backgrounds and collaborate. There's different ways you can do this. You can go through online meetups and conferences. You have all types of university connections. Lots of universities work with companies uh, to get people internships. And this can be through internships. Uh, you can go through uh, cybersecurity or even IT internships and really try to uh, get exposure to the IT department or environment. You know, don't try to limit yourself just to cybersecurity is something I've done myself as a mistake is just trying to get exposure to all different types of people, actively listen, and try to engage in conversation. Again, it's not necessarily fully experience, but as the aid, old adage, or whatever it's called goes, it's not oftentimes what you know, it's who you know. So if you can get your name out there, it's not a bad idea to do that. All right, so these are some of the strategies that I have been trying to use to bridge the gap between academia and the industry. Now, if you're like me and uh, you're a university student or you're someone who's trying to get started with cybersecurity, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to have to do is have a good schedule with productivity. And that leads me into today's sponsor, Skillshare. All right, so recently I've been trying to develop a productivity system which is gonna help me better learn and accomplish my cybersecurity goals. I've had the opportunity to follow along Productivity Masterclass, Create a System That Works, which is produced by author and YouTuber, uh, Thomas Frank on Skillshare. This class has helped me develop a personalized productivity system which fits my academic and personal life needs. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and really get lost in your own creativity. It's created specifically for learning, meaning that there's no ads and there's always launching of new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your own creativity takes you. It's less than $10 a month with the annual subscription. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below will get free learning on Skillshare. Thanks again for Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And of course, uh, Skillshare has really helped me with my productivity here with this masterclass. All right, so these are some of the ways that I have been actively working on as in the last year university student in cybersecurity to wage the gap between experience. This is something that I've actually talked about in my little uh, newsletter that I produce each couple of weeks. So if you are interested in learning more about strategies when it comes to getting into cybersecurity, um, you can subscribe to the newsletter. With that being said, I hope that you have found this video helpful. And if you are looking for some online community, you can join our online Discord community, Cyber Academy. New opportunities are up and coming with the community itself. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. So, hope all is well. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.